I had hoped that tonight we would have a aquaponics gentleman here um, that had agreed to come, but then I guess there was a confusion on the day or the time or whatever. And um, uh, but he's he's not, doesn't just build them, but he's working on doing it commercially. And, and then teaching people also, because uh, going into our evening time here and our guest speaker time, um, it's very important to be more self-sufficient, I believe. Um, as prices go up, and uh, you know, unfortunately in so many ways, they're, they're, um, they're killing the farmers. I mean, they're making it so hard. I mean, Monsanto, the seeds and the litigation, and it just is it's horrible that um, we need to find alternative, and aquaponics, aeroponics, hydroponics is really the way to go. It's very, very, you have to learn it and you have to do it, which goes to preparedness, um, folks. Uh, you don't just learn it in one minute and then, wow, I've got a garden. It's something you have to look into, maybe start a little small, start doing something, and, and, and learn about it, you know, as you go. Because the day you need it, it's not going to be the day that you're going to be able to just produce a garden, you know. Um, a, a lady at a meeting last Saturday night, she was showing her around her thumb. She had a blue bandage on it. She said, this just shows you before you have a green thumb, you, you end up having a blue thumb. Yeah, this is really true. There's a lot of um, trial and error to it all. But again, with networking, just like with this gentleman, you don't have to do it all yourself. You don't have to, you know, learn from scratch, learn from people. We, uh, we are lucky tonight to have uh, a gentleman and his wife here um, that has been doing a lot of trial and error in the, in the area of um, farming in his backyard. I mean, um, in, in Duncanville, um, he has, it's the cutest little farm, I swear. It almost looks like Disneyland or something because it looks like a joke, you know? You know like when they make a little town and they make like a little saloon and it's like a joke saloon? Well, that's what the backyard looks like. It looks like this chicken coop is a, a little joke, kind of, sort of, but it's really a chicken coop and it's very, very cute and very nice. So um, I, I want to try and stay on time um, because basically what we do is the first hour we talk about organizational stuff, what we've done, what we've got coming up. I don't think we have any, I think it's so big, our Wednesday thing, and uh, we want to make sure as many people can come to the Wednesday thing. The Kokesh thing um, kind of came up quickly, and that's tomorrow. Um, Thursday, every Thursday, the 9-11 group, which usually there's somebody here, there's Albert's here from 9-11, John goes to 9-11. I try to promote their group, 9-11 Truth. Um, again, everybody may not believe everything that, um, that we talk about, but then again, have an open mind because a lot of times we may not believe it because it's hard to believe that um, the government or that there's people that could have known about that situation and let it move forward and, and, and that the information that's out there may not be the truth. So just segue into that for one second. David has queued up. I'm not sure how many people have heard this because I am on Facebook. A lot of people don't believe about Facebook, and I understand that, but um, I use the social media to help unite situations too. Well, uh, yesterday at the Super Bowl, a gentleman had come in, and who's the name of that guy again? The football player? Malcolm Smith. Smith. Malcolm Smith with the Skyhawks. What do they call them? Seahawks. I never watch football. <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> okay. Um, he was, you know how after the game's over and they're sitting before, I wish I had a projector. I eventually will get a projector again. Um, you can kind of, can you turn that and show your, your uh, computer at all or no? It would be kind of difficult. You know how they sit there in front of a microphone and, um, uh, let's see, if you can turn it around. It's very, very short, but... This guy comes in. Okay, go ahead, David. Uh, Jack, can you move uh, to your right, please? Jack, could you move that way? Back a little. Yeah, there you go. As loud as it goes. Nice, huh? Uh, okay. That's taking, that's taking and making an opportunity. This 30-year-old guy, he's a, he says he's an amateur. Uh, look at this guy's like, is everybody okay here? You know. But um, anyways, he, um, okay, 30-year-old guy, amateur journalist. He decided he was going to get in there. He didn't know what he was going to do, you know, whatever. He did not pay for a ticket. 
he came through, and this is what he did. He said, oh, man, I'm late for work. Uh, I've really got to get in here. So he gets past all security. He gets in. He can't believe how close he is. He just can't. He's like, wow, they haven't stopped me yet. They haven't stopped me yet. They haven't stopped me yet. And here he had this opportunity, grabbed the microphone to say his couple of, what was that? 20 seconds, maybe? But what a message. What a message. What a message. And now a lot of people haven't heard that. Even Carter said, you know, you'll hear people talking about it, but there it is, and that's going to go viral, you know? What? In the NFL's defense, they are a non for profit organization, so they probably can't afford the right security. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, <laughs> but you know, yeah, they talked about the security. But the thing of it is, is um, um, another uh, program, Alex Jones, you know, they had two reporters go there. Seventeen hundred dollars for their ticket to get in, you know. So and, and they it's and like the worst seats there. The worst seats, you know. So I mean, uh, this was like one of those things. But y'all guys, we've got to find our opportunities. They're around us all the time, and we've just like he's talking about. You you find out where those city council people are, and you go ask them the questions, hand them a flyer, be nice. Like that was nothing scary or anything. It's like look into it, people, you know, and get it on camera. Because another thing that we do by the way is Pete Sessions is a congressman in this area and he is terrible and he's blocky than Benghazi investigation and and it's the power of the system you know the Republican Party he's the chairman of the Rules Committee he can stop bills from coming forward just like that guy in the State House I know his name uh, with an S who's the guy in the State House that blocks all the bills we want to get rid of him who's the guy in the State no, no, no. The guy who stops all the bills that comes to the floor in the state legislature. Oh, guys. You all know this. Oh, well, whatever. Stovall, not Stovall. Strauss. Strauss, Strauss, Strauss. Okay, the system does that. And it's, again, it's power and it's money. They get in there and they're so entrenched and people are afraid to get them out. We, we don't need to be afraid. Just like you said, I don't care. There's nothing. We're individuals. We can speak out. We're not with any group that's going to tell us we can't say it. And there he did. He did it. So that's awesome. Well, all right. So now I'm back, getting back to Bob here again. Bob and Kim um, are, are good friends of mine. I, um, I met them a few years ago handing out flyer to, to have them come to another event. So it's, a, it's where I meet some of the best people. And so through the time, um, he's going to come forward maybe and tell us about how he is um, fighting the system and doing things. And Kim, are you going to join him or yeah, and do your thing here? Tell us about what you do in Duncanville and, and how productive it is and, and uh, any suggestions for people. and. This is um, trying to get off the grid. That's not, no, not that. It's trying to um, provide for your family without having to go to the grocery store. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. so Bob and Smiley. Thank you. The name of our farm is Liberty Blessings. Um, we are Christians. Um, we have seen God's hand uh, repeatedly um, bless our farm. A uh, couple of things that we do is we, uh, we try to make it self-sustaining. Um, we try to repurpose uh, wood. We've built all our barns, all our chicken coops with repurposed wood. Uh, we might have spent, we've got probably um, five, six barns and coops, uh, and we are right in the middle of the neighborhood. Um, but uh, it, it's almost cost us maybe uh, just several hundred dollars for, for hardware and maybe some roofing material. So we've really, we've done this on a shoestring budget. You don't have to have a lot of money to do this. One of the things uh, that uh, um, we want it to look nice because we're in a, in, a, in a neighborhood. We want it to be inexpensive. We don't want it to smell because we don't want to offend neighbors. We have, what we have is we have dairy goats. Uh, we have chickens that lay. We have meat chickens. We have meat rabbits. Uh, we have a, uh, we're starting aquaponics with tilapia. Uh, we're looking at getting into um, uh, quail. Um, we want to feed our family. We want to feed uh, naturally. And uh, um, when you eat, uh, when you, when you uh, eat a chicken from, from our place, it's, it doesn't have all the nitrates in it, all the, all the, the chemicals, uh, the, the corn, the soybean, they have a natural diet. When you eat the eggs, the eggs are incredible. I used to hate eggs. Now I love eggs. I eat them almost every morning. Um, they taste different. Um, 
but uh, uh, we've got a place that's set up really nice. It looks like a little western town. Uh, we want it to be really um, um, easy on our neighbors' eyes. They, a lot of our neighbors come over and bring their grandkids or bring their relatives, you know, and, and so it's a place for us to, to uh, meet new neighbors and new people and, and, and talk about issues that are, are, that are affecting us. Um, this has been a lot of trial and error. Um, we've learned that uh, uh, we've had to rebuild structures to make them uh, uh, more protective for the animals because we do have bobcats come in and we do have uh, coyotes and, and foxes and wild dogs and we have lost uh, some animals and uh, that's pretty expensive. Um, but uh, uh, we live on three quarters of an acre so it's not really a small yard but it's definitely not big. We've got uh, four goats um, we started out with basically four goats, now we're growing. Uh, we picked up a couple of new girls for, for milking in the year, th this coming year. Um, they're all bred, they're all fixing to kid about right, you know, within the next couple of months. Should have probably about another up to 16 goats uh, born in the next couple of months. So they produce about four goats apiece. Four. I'm sorry? Oh, yeah. yeah, four, the girls give us about four kids apiece, so, uh, which we sell them for about 150, dollars a piece uh, pays for the hay pays for all the feed um, and we buy bales 1200 pound bales about every two months we buy five six hundred pounds of uh, uh, f um, feed uh, different types of feed um, and then it's all paid for by these kids that we sell now we get all our own milk it's raw uh, it's delicious um, there's a lot of benefits that we see in our family that um, right now the allergy season's upon us and we're actually out of milk because our girls are pregnant and as soon as they kid probably in a, probably two months we'll start milking again but uh, the benefits from from raw milk is incredible it's not pasteurized uh, uh, the enzymes are all there um, but uh, the thing is it, it does take a little bit of work you want to keep the the, the uh, uh, their barns uh, clean and uh, you want to keep the smells to a minimum if you can and, and so there's a lot of work taking care of that but the joys uh, the culinary joys the joys of sharing eggs with neighbors um, uh, family we also sell some eggs to some people that helps supplement the, the, the chicken feed um, but uh, um, the kids our children uh, not kids. Our children, they have learned uh, great responsibilities. They're very responsible, very respectful. Uh, they have a good work ethic. Uh, I think with this little farm, um, you know, we all have our chores, and they, they, every every month they change, so no one gets stuck with something over and over again. And uh, <clears throat> I, you know, I, I'm very, I'm well pleased with what I see with my children and, and how they interact on the farm. But it has been a trial and error. We've had, uh, you get to see life being born. You also get to see death. Uh, that is very, uh, you know, it's just part of farm life. Um, the, uh, uh, but the benefits for your own food, and it almost, it's, it's at a minimum cost. Um, that outweighs, outweighs everything. Uh, there is a lot of hard work. Like I said, we repurpose a lot of things to, uh, um, and we want it to, you know, we want it to be a sound, sound structures, and nice looking. Uh, our place is not. Uh, um, uh, it, 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 it's, uh, it's not. Um, it's not an eyesore. It's, it's a beautiful little park kind of, and uh, um, it does take a lot of work, but the benefits are great. But I'm gonna. My wife can tell you a little bit about uh, what she does on the farm, which is quite a bit. Uh, she. Uh, if it wasn't for her, we, uh, she's found out a lot of things about feed, uh, how to improve production, and um, how to improve health. And actually, we see that, uh, we're, we're learning that by how we treat the animals, uh, we treat ourselves. And we, Regina, uh, I don't know if you all ever heard of Dr. Wallach, uh, but <laughs> we've learned a lot from him. Uh, and then how to treat our animals, and then treat ourselves uh, through vitamins and nutrition and and uh, but anyway, here's my wife, Kim. Um, we actually started out about 2008, and we started out with six chickens. 
And at that time, I wasn't really awake to what was going on as far as everything that y'all know here. So we just started out just for some fresh eggs. And um, it kind of grew from there once we moved on to our property where we are now. And then we started with Nigerian dwarf goats. They're a small goat, but they're supposed to give, you know, a good butterfat milk. So we, um, we started with about three does and a buck. And this is our third season to have kidding. Um, where we're doing the milking, and um, um, I just lost my train of thought. Um, and then my daughter started with the rabbitry with um, raising the meat rabbits and um, uh, and the garden. Bob hadn't mentioned the garden. <laughs> That's a whole other story. Um, <laughs> um, we had been in Indiana for a short time, and you could throw a seed down, and it would just grow. Texas is a lot more challenging. Um, I know there's two growing seasons, and you have to start early in order to get it before the July and August heat. And um, that's one of the things that's been a real uh, challenge for me um, is that well, as Bob said, you know, we are Christians and we know in the Bible there's prophecies about things that are going to be happening during the end times and we are already seeing them being fulfilled through a lot of the stuff that's happening. But one of the things um, that um, in Revelation it does say that um, there will come a time when you will not be able to buy or sell without the mark. And for us, we're not taking the mark. So we have to be able to feed ourselves. Um, and so I'm just glad I've told Bob and others that if we had to live out of our garden right now, we would be starving. <laughs> we would be starving because it's just been a real trial and error. So I, I, I'm really glad right now I can go and learn and not have my life depend on it. So if anybody is thinking about gardening, like Regina said earlier, don't just think you can just pick up and, you know, have it all work for you at once. Start now. If you're in an apartment, condo, whatever, you can start with containers in, in, in container garden. There's a lot of plants that you can do that. And I would encourage that because it has been a challenge. And granted, we have a lot of um, plates spinning as far as, you know, a lot of areas to learn from our rabbits to our goats to the chickens to the garden and now the tilapia so um but last year um especially um with our with our goats um that was a big learning year for us nutrition wise because a lot of people will think that oh well goats they eat tin cans they eat garbage you know and you're fine and um they don't <laughs> um and so um we had a big we lost several goats last year due to nutrition and they need vitamins and minerals just as much as we do and when you, they are getting what they need then what you are getting in the milk or the cheese um you're getting all those nutrients too so um, if you are at all thinking about you know delving into this area of self-sustaining I would highly encourage don't wait until you're forced to do it start learning now um, and getting your feet wet because there is a lot to learn um, we have as Bob said um, we have um, we started out with the six chickens and now we're up to <laughs> 50 something or something um, and we're to the point now where we're learning how to make our chicken feed and supplement that so we're trying to get away from all the Monsanto soybean and corn we're not fully there yet because as I said you learn a little bit at a time um, in those areas but uh, we were our focus last year was a lot on the nutrition of the animals the nutrition of um, ourselves and really making sure those nutrients are there so that they are healthy and they produce like you want them to produce so, um, um, I think that's... You're getting about how many eggs a day? We get up to two dozen eggs a day right now. And that's because we have started making our own feed and really um, making sure all the nutrients that they need are in there. And they have rewarded us with that by really increasing their egg production, which, as I said, we are starting now to where they are starting to produce enough where we can start to cover the cost because in the beginning <laughs> you know you're just learning and there's a lot of expense in the beginning as you figure things out but um, um, let's see what about the mistake with the, the uh, uh, peanut skins yeah I mean it's you know we were trying different feeds and come to find out we had tried this one particular supplement to the feed and it made them stop laying eggs and so we had no eggs for almost six months so it's just you know it's it's just a continual learning thing um 
Yeah. And how many chickens is that that lays a dozen eggs a day? We have, oh. um, mm -hmm. we might have about 20 layers, maybe a little more. We might be up to about 20, 24 layers. We have some that are younger. We have some that are guinea, that are guineas. And guineas only lay like during the summertime. They only have a short season. And then we have roosters. Um, um, so I think we're, I think we're at about maybe tops of 25. Well, that can't be right. Yeah, there's more than that. There's got to be more than that yeah. for us to have yes. about. Yeah, maybe it's around 30, 30 to 35 yeah. to get probably about 35. two dozen eggs a day. Mm -hmm. Out of 25 chickens? It's probably more no, like 35. No, I think it's more 35 because yeah. we just had some, some graduate. We had probably about 20 birds that just, they were young and they just now started laying. Right. So that's why I'm still on it, the old number. It takes <laughs> a good six months for them to get right. to... Uh, Right. Uh, to start laying right. and you know a lot of people think that you can just you know s slaughter those birds later but you've got a really big investment in layers mm -hmm. you know <laughs> six months is, is quite a long time uh, and the meat chickens you only want to raise for about three weeks or three months because uh, you don't want them to get too too um, um, too tough um, but uh, you know same with the goats you know we've we've had trial and error with the goats uh, too much alfalfa uh, changed the taste of the milk, mm -hmm. and uh, my daughter's done an incredible amount of work. It, it almost makes a little scientists uh, out of out of, out of uh, uh, whoever's you know focused on, on, on their chores. They, they they try to figure out how can we make this better. So it, it, they're they're growing in an education that we never even planned to give them, right. and uh, we're learning from each other and. Now the milk, I don't, I don't think I could ever go back to cow's milk. This stuff is wonderful. There's nothing like a, a glass of this, this 10%, 8 to 10% milk fat with a, with a uh, chocolate chip cookie. There's nothing better. Uh, Plus the goats are a lot of fun. They're just, oh. and when you get the little babies born, which, you know, we have them do as of now we have one goat do as of now so that's why my daughter's staying home she won't leave home well we got goats do so uh, we have about two do within the next week or two and then the other two are due in march but um it's very rewarding you get so much enjoyment even the chickens just being silly chickens you know they there's a lot them yeah, yeah we do <laughs> so cute. we do really. but um what about uh, uh, baby chickens i mean baby chicks Yes, we have had some of our hens go broody, and that's always fun to see. You'll have a, we have a little banty hen. She's not much bigger than a dove, and she'll hatch eggs from bigger chickens. So eventually her little chicks will grow up, and they're huge. <laughs> they're trying to get under her. They're regular-sized chickens, and she's just a little thing, and it's, they're just a lot of fun. There's a lot of reward in um, just life on the farm. There's a lot of pain. It's hard losing animals when we lost several goats last Boy, that was tough, you know, because they become your babies, and you know, you just get used to caring for them. Um, Sounds like your hens are keeping your roosters exhausted. Um, I'd say it's the other way around. <laughs> we have several roosters right now, so we do have to sell them off at times because they get a little competitive. But yeah, one thing about it is, uh, um, you know, you're you're tied to the place. We can't leave and go on vacation. Vacation. Unless we got to uh, hire somebody to come in. Or some one of the children would have to stay home. Right. And you know, uh, do it's that. a lot of it is a lot of responsibility. Right. Um, right. You know, one of the things and, we, we're, we're very mindful of is the neighbors. You know, we want to make sure that it's very pleasant for them. Right. Um, but uh, uh, the, like I said, the rewards are incredible. Yeah. When you cook with this milk or the eggs. It uh, is. Or, it the, is. or the, the, the meat rabbits, uh, they're incredible. It's the highest uh, protein, lowest fat meat you can find. And actually rabbit meat has a, a high amount of omega-3s. Which is omega three? Yes, wow. omega three. I thought it was just fish, so now I don't have to eat fish. John has a question. <laughs> yeah. How do uh, dogs and goats get along together? Um, as we. As I have a dog, and I just want to see if she would need a companion. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, it depends on the dog. Um, we've had friends that have dogs, and they tear up their chickens. So it's very good. We have an Aussie, and he's very good with all of our animals because you certainly don't want your dog destroying all your hard work. And actually the, 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 the goat the goats will actually put the dogs in their place. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And females? Yeah, the females will too. They they will all buck the dog and the, the dog our dog's not a herd dog. 
uh, or he's not a, uh, a guard dog, he's a herd dog. And, and goats don't need that, yeah, they don't need an Aussie, they don't want an Aussie around. And they show them, I mean, they put him, pretty much when they first met, they put him in his place. Right. So uh, they respect each other now, but they just, yeah. yeah. So the goats can take care of themselves. Um, and since we had to build really sound structures, we don't have to have to have a, a guard dog. And that was another thing too, as Bob said, um, you know, we're in the middle of suburbia. And so with secure structures and making sure you're getting everybody locked up at night, because we do have predators. We've lost animals to bobcats and a lot to birds of prey. Um, and then um, some mysterious disappearances. We're not sure who did it, but um, so there's a lot to learn, you know. Um. Did you bring your books in? Oh, that's right. I meant to show you. If anybody was interested, um, one of the books, even if you're on, um, this is one of my favorite books. It's called um, The Backyard Homestead, and they talk about how to have a homestead even on a quarter of an acre. Um, growing grain. You can grow, I think it's 10 by 10 uh, plot of land, you can grow 50 pounds of grain, you know, if you have the right sun or conditions. So this is a really great book. I mean, from um, we started a grape orchard, we, you know, with a garden. I mean, it really shows you and it gives you layouts on um, like a quarter of an acre to show you what you can do, you know, with so that's a really good bit. And there's a couple other books I have too written down. And then if you are interested in chickens um, or animals, one of the best guides that there are are the story guides. Um, they give a lot of good, valuable information. This is a more of an illustrated guide of different chicken breeds, which is a fun book. We've checked it out a lot. And then um, they have one on dairy goats, pigs, cows, um, just about everything but stories guide. Um, is very good for starting out and getting information down. So, and, and once you get hooked up with other groups, you start you start learning uh, how to do things better, mm -hmm. and you find you can uh, learn from one another's mistakes. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, I've got a friend that's doing starting uh, with uh, bluegill instead of tilapia, and he set up a solar light with uh, um, uh, that it, at night it attracts all the insects, and he feeds his fish for free. He did. He did. An, he's doing another thing right now, which I don't know if I agree with, but uh, everyone's done eating, right? Uh, he puts out leftovers in a in a in a container, and the flies come and lay, and the larvae fall into the chickens. This guy's doing some things that are really out of the box. To be self-sufficient. To be self-sufficient. Of course, he's got a lot more land than I've got. He's got a he's, seven acres. Yeah, he's got seven acres. So. Yes, sir. Yeah. What, what about your water source? How do you manage your water? You know, uh, that, is a, that is a difficult thing because uh, all the cleaning, uh, we don't have a well. I uh, wish we did. That's something when, when, if we move, we'll definitely get a well because we've got a lot of spraying down to do and, and you always got to change out the waters and, and all the animal stuff. Um, so we lose a lot. Uh, and one of the things we do want to get into is rainwater harvesting, but it's a matter of <laughs> one project at a time. There's so much, and there's so much to learn in yeah, each we're, area. We're, and then plus two with the um, gardening, um, Regina turned us on to the back, back to Eden gardening, and that has been a lifesaver as far as um, saving water in our garden. So. Yeah. Do you know about Back to Eden? Have you heard of that movie? I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. It, it, it teaches you about covering. And uh, keeping the moisture in, keeping the moisture down and nutrients, and and uh, so that helps out in our gardening area. Okay. Uh, we're fixing to put it in an orchard too, a small orchard, and um, we're going to do that. So hopefully we don't, because uh, we're stretched on the, the the water. Our water bill is high, but are you planning to uh, harvest any honey? That's another project That's in we're looking into. Yeah. I, yeah. I talked to the lady. Uh, yeah. yeah, and, and she, uh, she was like, do you have enough food for the bees? Are you going to bring in thousands of bees and not have enough food? Right. We don't have it. So we got to start putting out flowers. Right. So um, we need to prepare for that. Because I've seen a lot of my friends lose their, uh, lose their bees. They yeah, they fly away. Yeah. So they go um, neighbor's yard or, or whatever. I saw a, a um, feed store in Garland, three dollars for a little chick, uh, for a chicken, uh, just as a chick. So if I wanted to get two eggs a day, it sounds like I would need four chickens. 
and my city that's um, you can have four four hens, no no roosters, but you can have four hens in, in where I'm at. Um, so, what would I need in order to get started? Just a synopsis. You would need um, like at Home Depot they have those uh, I don't know what you call it, those lights. Uh, and you, you um, with the big lamp. silver thing, lamp. the big oh, silver. I, lamp. I don't know what's going You want to make sure, though, you have a ceramic base. Don't get a plastic base because you'll be having it on constantly while the chicks are young. And then you need an incandescent bulb, one that produces heat, not the fluorescent stuff. But um, so you need that. And then we put down um, really just newspaper when they're chicks. We don't put down wood shavings. Um, and then you, they have little chick bowls um, and a little chick dish because you don't want to drown chicks. Um, as far as them, you know, have, putting it in a deep bowl of water, you could drown them. So they have those at the feed stores. And really just heat and then the food and water available at all times. Chickens lay um, every 24 hours or so, depending on the breed. You have your high production breeds like your Leggerns and your Rhode Island Reds, and then you have your Easter Eggers, which lay colored eggs, blue or green eggs, but they don't lay as often, you know. So it depends on the breed that you get. And you don't need a rooster in order to get eggs, just if you want them fertile. Um, Le Leggerns. Kitchen scraps? Um, you start with, they really, chicks, oh need high protein, 20% protein, and they have those at the feed store rate, you know, they have those at the feed store, whether you want the, you know, the regular or the organic, depending on that, but starting off with four chicks that should, la you know, a 50 pound bag would last you a good long time, um, but they have to have the 20% protein while they're growing. And, and you need to look into breeds, because like the Leggerns are your, your uh, high production, high production, what you get in your grocery store, the white right, eggs. Right, the big white eggs. And uh, they, they are very prolific. You'll get 250 eggs out of each chicken wow. every year. Yeah. So we've got, we've got a few legs. Yeah. Speaking of Easter eggs, which kind of chicken lays the spotted eggs? I don't think there are any. Oh. <laughs> um, well, got there the are price. some that have speckled eggs, but um, not polka dot eggs. I have two things um, yes. and I want you to address. I know they were very concerned about the spraying for um, the mosquitoes, and she did try to go. She's in Duncanville, so they went to their city council trying to bring the uh, little arm forward, mm -hmm. and that's very frustrating. So I'll talk about that. But mm -hmm. I also want you to, I, I looked up and I got some statistics on rabbits, <laughs> and that um, uh, you can skin and butcher five rabbits to every chicken given the same amount of time. And they had a lot of benefits. So to the group here, I'm thinking, as I read this, rabbits seem like a good idea to get started with first, because they're quiet, you can keep them indoors. Yes. So tell well, us about- You wouldn't about want them indoors. Really, really? No. Not unless you touch the cage. So no. do a lot. Yeah. A lot, okay. Yeah. But tell us about the rabbit experience, and then I do want you to talk about the spring. But also the rabbit, because what I was thinking was I would never want to kill it or anything, but um, I guess that's networking, you know? I mean, you've done this, you know? So if somebody raised something and then they wanted to um, butcher it and they didn't want to do it themselves, I bet there's a, a co-oping kind of thing and you can keep the skin or something? Yeah, um, well, there is a place down in Mansfield where they butcher out, right? And I've had friends that take it there, but Bob wants him and the boys to do it or Lauren, she actually does the butchering of the rabbits. She's quite handy. Um, the rabbits, <clears throat> um, the spraying actually has killed our rabbits. Um, it makes them infertile. That was the aerial spraying. And so we've had a hard time with our rabbits the past year and a half. Um, yes, rabbits are very quiet. They're very low maintenance. You just give them their rabbit feed and make sure they have water. Now, the hardest thing about raising rabbits is the heat. They do much better in the cold. July and August is miserable for them. Um, we usually put out ice bottles for them or we'll even dunk them in mop buckets. And at first they're fighting, but then they're like swimming. They're happy. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> um, so, and you can use the manure in the garden straight on the, on the garden. You don't have to uh, compost it. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm forgetting. <laughs> you know, rab as far as the rabbits go, they're, they're prolific breeders. You'll get yeah. a dozen at a time uh, per mother. Um, they're easy to take care of. Uh, yeah. Just 
all our animals, all our structures are up off the ground so there's air movement, so nothing sits and collects smells. Um, so we try to keep it as clean as possible. Um, but uh, the butchering, yeah, at first it's hard, but uh, once you start doing it, you have a system. Uh, I usually get, grab two of my children to help, and uh, I've got twin boys that are almost, they, I don't know what happened, but they don't, they don't want anything to do with this. But the daughter, does. The daughter and my youngest are. She's are, so cute and so wonderful, yeah. and she butchers them. She helps. She butchers, yeah, yeah. she'll butcher okay. them, and yeah, she's got the skin saved up because that's something else she wants to do to wow. learn but, but um but you, there's so many different ways to cook the rabbits uh yeah it's just any, rabbit, any uh, chicken stew. dish you can use rabbit yes. and um, you know it's healthy you know not what you get at the store you know you've raised it and so that you there's know, consolation in it. that yeah, yeah exactly so um so rabbits are a good thing it's just a matter of keeping them cool in the summer that's the hardest thing and the spring and the winter time we just lost a whole clutch because uh the cold uh, babies, yeah, babies, babies, uh, babies don't do well in cold because they're born hairless. Yeah. So we're still, it is a learning. Sometimes, thing. yeah, when yeah. that cold comes and you're, you know, it can take a yeah. whole. If, it, if you got a new mother, she doesn't pull enough fur for the nest or they get out of the box. So it's constant learning and um, with them. But they're, they're, um, that has been my daughter's business. But um, did, did you have a question? Yeah, I was just wondering if you had any problems with the city on the farm, you know, ordinances and all um, that Well, one of the animal control tried to show up and tell us that we were not, we were breaking code and we know our code. We know we're not breaking it and he was difficult and so I had to call his superior and work it out and it was a big mess. Duncanville and politics is no fun. That's, it, it's, it, that's everywhere, but yeah. one, one of the things we did do is we took our oldest boy, one of the twins, and we let him handle uh, going down and talking about code. Awesome. So, cool. because, really yeah. Really uh, he's, he's 19 now, but that was, <laughs> that was last year. I, I went up to the, the, the uh, police chief. I went up to the, uh, uh, fire chief. the fire chief. The fire chief started this stuff. He went to the neighbor's house. And he reported us. He reported us. He said, because oh, they've got hundreds and hundreds of chickens. And at that time, we only had probably about 35 30, yeah. and maybe 30. So. And There's they were no running loose in our yard, which yeah. is a secure enclosure. But of course, you know, we're, I had to we're completely in cold. animal control. No, I am with the guidance. So, but uh, I use this. I, I did use this <laughs> as an opportunity to go up and hand uh, hand some cards out. I don't know if I've got any, but um, they, uh, like Virginia was talking about, the oath keepers. Um, I went up and talked to them about keeping their oath to protect. Uh, um, yeah, I don't. But. Uh, to, to protect our rights. They're supposed to uphold and protect our constitutional rights. And he's up there trying to cause problems. And like Kirk Lanius was saying last week, it's, it's taxation through citation. And that's what they wanted to do. And, and I'm like, no, you, you guys are supposed to help, you know, take care of us. We're doing what we're supposed to do. Now you do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Probably fell on deaf ears, but I, I probably made them think a little bit. We, when they pushed, we pushed back because we knew the code, and they have left us alone since then. But you know. Well, we we did have code. We've got a hill. They were driving up and yeah. looking down uh, on our property quite a bit. So I went up there and built a huge fence, <laughs> and uh, they can't look anymore. So, so yeah. uh, I had a lady that worked for Dallas Code, and she goes, "Why'd you build the fence?" I said, "Because the guy was like a peeping tom." I don't want him on the property. That's none of his business. So, but it's been a great learning experience. Uh, we did have, uh, you know, a lot of questions going into it. Um, we did re our research the best as we could. We wanted to, you know, uh, if my suggestion to anyone that wants to get started is, is to start reading about it, start asking a lot of questions, uh, getting experience from others that know we'll be available anytime. You guys can get our number if you, you're interested mm -hmm. or our email. Um, and there's a wealth of websites yes. um, online, backyard chickens, backyard herds. Um, there's many more than that that you know you can go and put Anyone your question out there. And there's lots and lots. You of can help feed yourself. And, yeah, yeah. You can feed yourself, and so. you can. When I get this tilapia thing done, we'll probably have hundreds of pounds of fish in the freezer, and be able to feed ourselves for the year. Yeah. So. That's right. um, anyway. Any other? Any questions, other? John? Um, probably with the chickens and the. Uh, goats, the high fat there, the, the rabbit just by itself is not a problem. But from what I've heard, uh, just rabbit by itself, 
uh, doesn't have enough fat to sustain a person, and, that, and for some reason that causes some kind of malnutrition. From what I've heard, the person was just to eat rabbits as their main source of protein. That's what I've heard. But you guys are doing the other two, so that now those are two high fat intakes. Number one, number two, I've heard of um, using um, a pet exemption for goats uh, in the city when you're in the city. Mm -hmm. Call it a pet, name it, so mm -hmm. on. Uh, the other thing is, for those of us who don't have land, those of us who are in an apartment or a condominium, you might find a homeowner who, you know, you help dig up his backyard and, you know, they, they water it for you. Know, you. You put your garden in there and then they water it for you. Yeah. You, share the mm -hmm. you share the produce oh. with them. If you find it, you know, a right. little old lady somewhere uh, who's, who can't do a garden of her own and you go dig up her garden space for her, and she plants her garden, and you plant your garden, and she waters, and you all split the produce. I love you know, that. A I creative love way of getting yeah. some land if you are not don't have a backyard. Right. But there's sure. also community gardens that you can go mm -hmm. and learn how to um, grow all of the veggies and everything. Mm -hmm. Have the truck farm girls. If you heard truck them. farm girls? Truck farm girls. They grow gardens in trucks, old trucks. Cool. But cool. they also have... <clears throat> they also have a gigantic farm in Wapsahatchee. Um, mm -hmm. They've been farming in their family for years. They have like heirloom seeds and that sort of thing. Right. Might be someone you want to get in touch with because they know vegetables and fruits. And, right. And they're and from this area. In you Texas. You know what? There's yes. straight people that know things, but they're right. not in Texas. Right. You know? And it's so. a whole new bar then. Yes. Uh, oh. I think John Gentry was first. Oh. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Um, Swap meats, flea markets. Do you sell it any of those, or do you have a plan to sell on any of them going forward? At this point, we do our selling on Craigslist, um, or word of mouth, or um, you can also do it through Backyard Chickens, Backyard Herds, where that's how we got one of our goats. Um, so at that point, at this point, and then plus my daughter's going to be starting to show the dairy goats too, which will be another outlet for sales. One, one important thing we haven't mentioned is uh, all our, our goats are registered, uh, all but one. No, two, I'm sorry. Two. But so they bring a higher, once the market comes back up, mm -hmm. um, we'll probably start selling some of these goats for $400 a piece. Once uh, we get the lines going. Yeah, and we're working on that too right yeah, now. So we've got, we've got two really good goats right now that will probably produce incredible lines. And hopefully uh, what we're looking for is to, a bigger udder, more milk production. Um, so that's, uh, that's, that, that usually brings in a, a, a much better sale. So that's something you can do with, with all kinds of animals is, is try to get them, get them registered and that'll help sustain better. Albert has. Yeah, I uh, just want to point out that from what I have read, the very best fertilizer you can get is powdered granite rock. <clears throat> and you can buy it around because it's rich in minerals hmm. and the plants convert those minerals into organic life. How about that? And uh, I have, for instance, well, I mean, to me, nature is simple. Termites will only eat dead wood. And all the other bugs that eat human bodies and other bodies and things only eat that which needs to be reprocessed because it's not sustained well enough. In any event, uh, exemplifying this, a friend of mine was growing some t uh, tomatoes one time here in North Dallas. So friend friends came over from uh, Garland, and they looked and they said, Jim, how come the caterpillars aren't eating up your tomatoes like they're infesting and eating all the tomatoes around the area this year? He said, oh, because I use powdered granite powdered as a fertilizer, and they're rich in minerals, so the bugs don't need to eat them. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, we don't believe that. And he had them go home and get some of their caterpillars. They put them on his plants. And they sat there for three days and didn't take a bite. Mm -hmm. That's so powder, 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 yeah, so powdered granite. Okay. okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So that's good. Well, we thank you, and um, we'll have you back for more uh, updates, I guess. That's good. I mean, it's really cute to see these baby goats, which are amazing how big they come out. I mean, they're, they're like a goat. They, they don't really look like a baby, you know? It's amazing. It's, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so then maybe if we ever get our projector, they send me pictures. We'll have them up on the projector. That would be really good. And we would love to help you. I mean, this is what we're about. When you're fighting, you're going to uh, the city.
City Council about fighting for the spring. Again, solidarity, getting over there. You help us, we help you. They're going to be there on Wednesday, at least Bob I know is, it, to be in the audience. And I see you got your tag. Um, that's good, the badge on. So um, it's all about, you know, networking. So let us know how we can help you. And that's great. So yay! Thank you for coming!